sometimes when my wood stove gets really uh, cooking in here, um, I take the blanket down, and that's enough to allow enough airflow and everything else to bring it back down to a reasonable temperature. It makes a big difference. One thing I'm doing differently this winter, too, is uh, the way I'm sleeping. Uh, last winter, I had a couple of wool blankets and a couple of sleeping bags on top of me, over the tip, way over the tip. And I would have an alarm on my watch that would set that would uh, wake me up in the night to feed the wood stove. This year, I'm doing it a lot differently. This year, I have just a sheet and a couple of wool blankets. Uh, and you see that on the bed here. This is light coverings. And I allow the temperature to drop in the TV. And when the temperature drops, it wakes me up and I feed, feed the fire. It's much more efficient that way. Um, it works a lot better. And another thing that's different in the TV this year is that the, I devised a new way to hang my bucket. Uh, this is, I don't know if we've talked about this in the past, but it's my, basically my general all purpose faucet, garden hose attached to a, bucket, probably about a three gallon bucket. Um, I use it for everything from rinsing my dishes to washing my hands, to taking a shower, to you name it, anything that you would use a faucet for. I hang it again on a fork of the branch, tied right up here. And when I want it up and out of the way, I'm going to put it up like this. Put the hose up in there and it's out of the way for the most part. When I want to use it, I have this nylon webbing. It can be, it can be anything, you know, rope, twine, anything. This just happens to be uh, part of my dog sledding equipment, so I can use it as a dual purpose. There we go. That brings it down to level. So that way I can, if I want to wash my hands, this is my bucket that I use to wash my hands and rinse off fruits and vegetables in. That way I don't get spray all over the place. I can wash my hands like that. I can walk, rinse off fruits and vegetables and all sorts of things like that. Uh, brush my teeth. Brush that right in the teeth. And, you know, brush my teeth, that sounds like a big deal, but when it's you know, about 10 below, you don't like to get up first thing in the morning or outside and brush your teeth and spit and rinse and all that stuff. It's not real. It wakes up quick, put it that way. Um, this way I brush my teeth right inside the TV from start to finish, which is really nice. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it is. <laughs> As I've been living in the TV, uh, I first decided that a platform would be the way to go from research. Um, I'm discovering now that I'm, I'm not real excited about a platform, especially for year around use. Um, I find that, that the water pools on it, because in a TV some water will come in. Uh, it's designed for the water to run down poles, which it does, if the poles prepare it properly. It does that very well. But it does take a little while for the water to find its channel down the poles. Also, the center in the summertime can only be closed up so small, so some water will come through the center. Depending on which way the wind is blowing and so on and so forth, depends on where the water is going to end up inside the TV. Um, it, it pools and collects on uh, plywood. Uh, a lot of my friends have mentioned, well, you could use, um, do it like a deck, you know, spaces in between. And uh, I go to my friend's place that have decks, and after the rain, it even pools on that. Um, so I don't think that would be, uh, would be acceptable. Um, one thing I have noticed is friends of mine that do live in teepees, well, they have teepees and spend time in them in the summer, I should say, um, have theirs on the bare ground. After a rain, it soaks into the ground with the grass and all that sort of thing. It soaks into the ground. It dries off a lot faster. It's more, more livable, I find. Um, so I think I'd put it on the bare ground. Another thing I think that I would do, again, I'm saying I think, because I haven't tried this yet, uh, but it is something I'd like to do, is find an area that's flat and somewhat elevated. Ditch around the outside, so that way there's excellent drainage. Um, put the poles in. I think that would work better. I find in the winter that having an elevated platform, the coldness comes in from underneath. Uh, I have a lot harder time keeping this TV warm at 20 degrees with no snow than I do at sub-zero temperatures with snow. And that's simply because um, snow packs around the bottom of the platform. And 
no cold air can get in. It makes a huge difference. I go through very little wood when it's uh, sub-zero with plenty of snow. And when it's 20 degrees, when we start getting springtime, it gets to be about 20 degrees and there's no snow at all. Um, I go through a lot of wood to keep it warm in here. So I'm not real excited about the platform. That's something that, I, you know, 2020 hindsight, um, that I've done. Find a way to put it on the airground, elevate it, and trench around it so that way there's excellent drainage. Uh, and I think that that would work much better than the platform. Okay, for insulating, I haven't really done anything different this year. Uh, still the same insulation. I intend on using it until it, you know, completely falls apart. I uh, want to get the most mileage that I can out of it since it's not recyclable and it's uh, not a renewable resource and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned before, I'm not thrilled about using it because of those reasons. Um, it's not biodegradable, not recyclable, it's not a renewable resource. I hated to use it, but as I mentioned before, it's kind of pushed into the situation where I had to. Um, that's it with the insulation. With the top this year, I did something a little bit differently. Um, we're in the northeastern woodlands area, and uh, teepees weren't used in the northeastern woodlands. Wigwams were. And wigwams were a lot like teepees. One of the differences was that they didn't have the smoke flap in the front, and um, the poles didn't extend uh, far beyond the top as if you want a teepee. So I wanted to see how that would make things different, um, seeing that the shelters are, are engineered to be intimate with the environment that they're in. Teepee's been great, and I love it, but I wanted to see if I could make it more like a wigwam and see what the differences there would be. Uh, I cut the tops of the poles off. A lot of my friends were, you know, crying in horror as they saw the tops of the poles come off one by one. I'd come down the ladder and take a look at it and scratch my head, too, because it really looked funny. Um, but it has made a world of difference. It's been a lot easier to seal up the top, get a tighter seal on the top, uh, and keep all the, the rain and snow and wind out. It's been a lot easier this year as far as that goes. Um, what, what my ancestors would have done, what the Abenakis would have done in this case, would be to have, um, I've been told, I haven't seen any pictures of this, but I've been told that they would have either a woven mat or some birch bark that in really bad weather they could put up there with some poles and adjust it and hold it in to cover the top, which would make it more smoky inside, but it would cover the top uh, and keep the bad weather out. <coughs> um, and I hope I've described that right. It was only described to me, so I'm definitely no expert on the situation, but that's how I understood it. Um, I should add, too, that that's, that's with the conical-style wigwams. But they also had a top flap. They obviously had them on the, the round-style uh, wigwams, but this is also with the conical ones as well. Um, okay, so I cut off the tops of the poles, and then I slipped the burlap sack over the, the tops of the poles and um, tied that on to there. And then from there, I took two heavy-duty garbage bags and pulled those down over them and duct taped them into place. Um, obviously, not what my ancestors would have done, but it serves much the same purpose. Uh, keeps it very, very dry in here. Uh, it's been great. It's been really, really great. It's been a major improvement over the last year. Of course, the aesthetics of the long, beautiful poles reaching out to the sky are gone, which I'm not real comfortable about either, but uh, we'll see if we can bring that back somehow next summer. Okay, another important part of TP living is storage. Um, my ancestors probably wouldn't have had such a problem with storage since they were moving uh, more often than, than not, so they didn't accumulate a whole lot of stuff. In this day and age, I accumulate a lot more stuff. Um, so I have to have some storage. I'm still really paring back and cutting down, um, but I still need more storage than just the teepee. So this summer I built a longhouse in back of the teepee, and it's worked great for storing uh, my odds and ends in stuff that I don't use all the time. I have my fish poles out there, um, you know, camping stuff, backpacks, uh, extra bowls and pots and pans that I don't use on a daily basis, those kinds of things. Um, just non-essential non things. 
and I put those out in the longhouse. And that's really freed up a lot of room in here and made things a lot, a lot simpler. Um, it, it lets me find things quicker because I know if it's not in here, then it's got to be in the longhouse. And, uh, and I can also organize my mind that it's not essential that it's in the longhouse. It lets me find things a lot quicker. And before, uh, before we wrap things up, I just wanted to say one more thing about Igor Markov. Um, I can't say enough about them. I won't even try. But all I can say is that they are incredible. They're, they're warm. They're comfortable. They're light. They're so incredible that I even got a pair for my daughter. And uh, you wouldn't think that a you know eight-year-old, nine-year-old kid would get incredibly excited about footwear. But uh, she can't stop yakking about them either. They're just so light and comfortable. One thing that's really unique about them is a very, very flexible sole like this. That allows your feet to have circulation. It's just, just a regular snowmobile boot liner inside, just like you would have on any other kind of winter pack. The difference is, is that you have this flexibility in the sole. Um, I can wear these inside my teeth. It gets about 90 degrees in there. That's what it was when we were filming in there, 90 degrees. Um, I can wear these inside, be incredibly comfortable, just like wearing slippers, and then come right outside and my feet don't get cold. I can stay outside for hours and my feet don't get cold. Uh, they're the most incredible thing. Anytime I convert someone to speed room up ups, they just don't stop talking about them. They look forward to winter. Just so they can wear their speaker muffins.